Hi everyone, Shireen here and welcome back to Beauty Editing 101. Today I'm teaching you how to edit your Instagram pictures like Desi Perkins. Desi's editing style mainly focuses on grainy film-like pictures with cutout borders and date stamps. Sometimes the images will also include additional textures and it's super easy to recreate, so let's begin. Today we're going from this to this, but before we dive in, some of you may be wondering what is a texture? A texture is a layer added to your photograph that adds texture to create more depth and feeling. Like these! The first step is to open up the picture that you want to edit. My image size is 1000 by 1400 pixels. Now this will cut off the top and bottom when you import it into Instagram, so just FYI. But Desi's borders of her images are typically cut off in Instagram anyway, so this gives us that effect. Next, to give us that grainy film-like look, I'm going to be dragging in this texture, which I will have linked down below, and I'm going to start rotating it by pressing and holding shift and rotating it 90 degrees. Now I'm going to place it at the bottom of the image and press and hold shift to scale it proportionally so that it covers the entire image and then press that OK check mark. Next, I'm going to be setting it to screen and then lowering the opacity. For these film-like textures, I usually like setting them to screen or soft light because I find that the image still stays true to color while still adding that grain effect. Moving on to the border, from my desktop, I'm going to drag and drop this border that I created myself and I'm also going to have this link down below as well as everything else that I'll be showing you guys in this tutorial. You guys can download it for free and recreate this yourselves. But anywho, as you can tell, we didn't alter that original image and scale it up to fill the whole canvas. So there are parts that are still transparent and that's showing through the border, but that is okay because with the textures that we're going to add, we're going to cover that up. Again, from my desktop, I'm dragging in this newspaper texture and then dragging it over to the left side of the image right along where that border is and then just placing it right there. So now what you want to do is rasterize this newspaper texture layer by right clicking on it and then pressing rasterize layer. What this means is that it converts the image from a vector into pixels, which honestly you don't really need to understand a whole lot about right now. It's basically a fancy way of saying that now we can go ahead and modify this layer. So now I just have my eraser tool selected and I'm scrolling through my brushes until I get to Spoon Graphics Watercolor 3. I'm going to scale it down a little bit and then make sure that you have your newspaper texture layer selected when you're doing this. Sometimes we don't have it selected when we're choosing the brushes, so just go ahead and double check that you have it selected. Now with that little circular tool at the top, I'm changing the rotation of the brush so that I can get it to a little bit around 90 degrees, a little bit past that, just so it's parallel with that newspaper texture because what we're going to do is cut it out. So now I'm scaling it up a little bit so that it fills up the whole frame and then start to press down once or twice with your flow at 100 and opacity at 100. That way you can give that newspaper a bit of a textured border. Perfect, that looks nice. So now I'm going to go back and change the rotation again. I want it to have it be a little bit more angled inwards so we can take off that top edge just slightly. Again, with the same step, just press down the brush once or twice with the flow and opacity at 100. With the move tool, I'm going to double check that I have that layer selected with the newspaper and then I'm going to press command J to duplicate it. Now with the quick selection tool, you want to click and drag that brush across the whole entire newspaper texture section. It's okay if you even go outside of the lines because ultimately what it's going to do is select the entire newspaper section only. Again, you want to make sure that you're doing this on the duplicate layer. So if you look over to the layers tab on the right and see that the copy layer is highlighted, then you're good to go. Now we're going to be going in with the brush tool. So just go ahead and click that. And then we're going to be scrolling back down to the watercolor three brush. And then once we get to that, we are going to change the rotation and the size similarly to the way that we did it with the eraser tool. Go ahead and take your time with figuring this out, there is no rush. Now in the meanwhile, I just want to remind you that the flow and opacity are still at 100 for this as well, and then make sure that the top color is white. If it isn't, just double click on the color and you can change it to white. So now what you want to do is click down about three to four times until you start to get a nice white edge right along that newspaper texture. Press command D to deselect that selection and this is what it should look like. Alright, looking good. We are about halfway. You got this. Let's finish strong. So now I'm just dragging in this rose texture layer from my desktop again 
rasterizing the layer and then pressing the quick selection tool. Again, make sure that your layer is selected, the rose layer, when you're doing this. So with the quick selection tool, what I'm going to do is select that light pink flower only. So what you're going to do is just drag your brush around the light pink flower. And then once you have it selected, press the move tool so that you can move that flower only and place it wherever you want to put it. Personally, I'm going to put it where that newspaper and the white border meet so that we can hide that little edge going on, you feel me? And then you want to press Command D to deselect that light pink flower. Now we're going to be moving on to the other flowers and just repeating that same exact step. So now moving on to that hot pink flower with the quick selection tool, I'm just dragging my brush all around it to make sure that it's nice and selected. Make sure that you don't go on to the other flower. It's very easy because they're so close to each other, but if you're just slow and careful with it, it'll be fine. So now with the move tool, I'm going to go ahead and place that right along the bottom. Again, same thing here. I want to cover up that border where that newspaper and the white border meet so that, you know, just hide your edges, girl. Hide them edges. Once you have the flower where you want it, go ahead and press command D again just to unselect that hot pink flower. So now we can move on into the red rows. So just a little quick reminder that when you are scaling up or down these flowers, you know, like when you're adjusting the size, make sure that you're pressing down and holding the shift key because that'll scale it proportionally. Like see right now, it's scaling that really nice and proportionally. If I wasn't holding down shift, it would start to get like too wide and it just won't look cute. So, you know, just hold down shift. It's your best friend. All right, that is looking cute. So let's move on and do the text. So what we're going to be doing is writing the date. The font that I'm using for this is called Segment 14. And as you can see, it's a really nice analog clock looking kind of a font, which is perfect because that's really similar to the style that Desi uses. So I'm just writing down the date. You can use literally whatever date you want. And then make sure that the color that you're selecting is sort of like orange hue. So the hex code that I'm using is FF7D27. You can just go ahead and copy that once you double click that color right where that like hashtag thing is. That's called the hex code and it'll give you the same color that I'm using right now. So you just want to make sure to press OK and then we're going to rotate this by pressing and holding shift. It'll start to rotate it by 15 degree increments, just rotate it 90 degrees and then scale it down while also holding down shift and place it wherever you want to put it. I'm going to put mine in the bottom right corner and then you can just go ahead and tweak this to your liking. I'm just going to move it a little bit more, scale it down a little bit more until I get it just right and then press OK. Okay, so now go back to your layers tab, make sure that that text layer is selected, press F of X, F of X, wow, are we in math class, screen? Press F, X, and then select outer glow. And then for this one, you want to pick another orange color as well. Kind of go a little bit lighter than the one that you used for the font itself. I'll show you guys the hex code that I'm using in a sec, but first I just want to show you the difference that this outer glow makes. Once you shut it off, that glowiness is just gone, but as soon as you add it back in, it's definitely a subtle difference, but it's such a nice touch. So the shade that I'm using is FFAC4B. So I have my blend mode set to normal, my opacity at 63, my size is at 38 and now I'm just adjusting the spread so basically this means it's gonna make it either less or more glowy I'm just keeping mine at 10 and then pressing ok all right now that is pretty much it you could leave it just like this but what I'm gonna do is go back to that first texture layer that we added which is the film grain and I'm gonna start to mess around with the opacity a little bit more only because the percentage that I had it at it honestly felt a little bit too overexposed so I'm just gonna bring it down so we can see more of that color shining through the opacity level that I ended up going with is 35%. And we are done. That is how to edit your Instagram pictures like Desi Perkins. Super easy, right? Go ahead and smash that like button down below if you found this video helpful. And don't forget to share it with a friend. Also, leave a comment down below letting me know which beauty editing 101 tutorial you would like to see next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!